This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this video, we're going to begin the actual modeling process of the robot itself. All right, so to start with here, we're going to start with some pretty basic primitives in order to build things. So let's go to our extended primitives, and we're going to use a chamfer box to build his body. So as I drag in my chamfer box, I'm dragging our height on the side, and then as I drag here, we're going to round that off. So that should be pretty good to start with. Now I do want to be able to see in my side view here, so we're going to change this from wireframe. Let's go to realistic. Alright, so as we look in here, we can see as we adjust the robot to fit our modeling planes, what's going to happen is we're going to continually grab those modeling planes themselves. So I'm going to grab all three planes, I'm going to right click, and I'm going to go to object properties. Those objects, I'm going to make them back face call I want to make sure back face call is turned on and I want to uncheck show frozen in gray so that when I freeze them I'll still be able to see the image if I leave show frozen in gray checked as soon as I freeze the objects the image will go away and they'll turn solid gray so that won't help us a whole lot so now that they're frozen we can't accidentally pick them so now again we'll go back to our modify panel we'll turn on edged faces for these views so we can see what's going on and then we're going to add some segments to be able to refine and adjust alright so that looks like that will be plenty of geometry so as we adjust his size here and then adjust position our overall shape is pretty close to what we want but definitely not exactly where we want it to be so if we look around at our fillet just move them up that's not too bad add another fillet segment and that's even better all right so from there since i have enough geometry to round out the body but i'm a little flat on the sides here we're going to right click and convert this to an editable poly that will allow me to be able to interact directly with every vertex edge polygon so here we have vertex edge border, which is an opening around, a set of edges around an open polygon. Polygon and element. Element is an entire object or chunk of mesh that is part of a sub-object. So again, we'll select those vertices. I'm going to go to soft selection because I want to expand these and make him a little bit rounder through the midsection there. But in order to do that, I don't want to have to grab every set of vertices here. I would rather be able to grab a region and then as I scale, I'll scale with a decreasing kind of ability to control those. So that looks pretty good. It's a lot more like that actual shape. Now as we look in here, we see we've got some extra edges and spots where we don't really need all of those edges. So one nice thing in 2012 is within our graphite modeling tools, we have geometry all and the ability to hit quadrify all. What that's going to do is it's going to look through my mesh and find any edges that it can delete in order to make all quads. So you can see when it deleted those edges there, I now have a four-sided polygon. So that's not truly vital in most situations, but it is nice to have all quads. All right, so now the body, in my opinion at this point, is pretty much done. We'll be able to move on to some other objects. So what we can do is we can start thinking about the appropriate primitives that we can use for certain parts of the body. Now I can tell in the elbows here we pretty much have spheres, but for a lot of things with modeling, spheres aren't really very good objects. And I'll show you why. So if I go back to my standard primitives and we just make a sphere, we'll make it in our front viewport. We're not going to end up keeping it anyway, so it doesn't really matter if it's orientation. If I look at this, see all of these edges coming to a single vertex. Generally speaking, if I'm never going to do anything other than have a sphere, it really doesn't matter. If I'm ever going to actually want to interact and modify this object in any way, having all of these edges coming to a single vertex is generally a bad kind of modeling method. So we're going to throw that away and we're going to make a box. So I'm going to make a box that fits pretty closely with that sphere. So we're going to go back here and we're going to make it 8 inches by 8 by 8. Alright, so I have a nice perfect cube. We're going to add, well, let's make it 4 around each side. Alright, so 4 by 4 by 4 box, that is 8 inches by 8 inches by 8 inches. 
Now, I'm going to add a modifier to this box called, you guessed it, Spherify. So um, the Spherify modifier is going to make that box into a perfect sphere. Right now, if we look at that compared to that original sphere, there are no crazy triangulated faces. So we get a real nice simple object here. Now if I go back to box, we can up those segments a little bit more to get an even smoother sphere. All right, so that ought to work pretty well. Now I can see though that it can be a little bit bigger. So we'll make it 10 by 10 by 10. And that's pretty good. It encompasses that geometry. Oh, maybe that's a little too big actually. So let's go nine by nine. So in this phase of modeling, all we're really trying to do is just start with some pretty basic primitives and figure out exactly which primitives we want to use in which areas of the mesh. So I'll start here with some cylinders and again, cylinders and spheres. So we'll be able to get some basic modeling done with just some really pretty simple objects. 